So far, we've seen the Astro Pixel processor is a superb program for calibration, stacking, RGB and LRGB combination, and for creating mosaics. In this video, we'll have a closer look at APP's individual processing stages in just a little bit more detail. I'll start off by loading one of the 600 second IC2118 luminance frames we used in the previous video on creating a mosaic of the Witch Head Nebula. I've set the scaling value quite high so we can zoom in and check for any potential problems in the image. Remember that this data set has been calibrated already by Telescope Live. As we zoom in, notice that there is a minor cold column defect on the sensor and also that there is a smattering of hot pixels. We can correct these quite effectively by going into the Calibrate menu and scrolling down to the section labelled Cosmetic Correction. There are three options here hot pixel kappa, cold column kappa and hot column kappa. We'll start off by leaving these on their default settings. There aren't any hot columns shown in the image so I will deselect this. Remember from the earlier videos that we can employ the drop list at the top of the screen to view the image in multiple stages of applied processing. I'll click on the calibrated view and you can see that the cold column has effectively been corrected. Notice though that some of the faintest background stars have also been removed. We can address this by changing the hot pixel kappa value. I'll start off by raising it to 5. This is not quite enough, so I'll raise it further to 10. This is much better and note that the cold column and hot pixels have still been removed. Next, I'll try out this procedure on a much tougher image taken with the Australia 2 telescope. This wide field view of the galactic center contains a hot column defect. We can try to fix this by turning on the hot column kappa option and deselecting the cold column kappa. A value of 8 doesn't completely remove the defect. I'll reduce the kappa value to 6. OK, that seems to have done a very good job. We'll try this one more time on an even tougher image taken with the same telescope. This is a hydrogen alpha view of the wonderful Eta Carina Nebula. The hot column defect is more aggressive in this data set. I'll try the calibration with the hot column kappa set on 6 as before. It's done quite a good job, but parts of the defective column are still visible, so I'll reduce that value to 4. This is better, but a small part of the column defect remains. I'll reduce the value even further, down to 2. Now this has obviously removed the hot column defect, but has created very bad artifacts, so we have obviously pushed the procedure too far. It looks like we may be unable to completely remove this column defect. I 
I'll continue by moving on to the next processing option, Analyze Stars. For this, we'll be working with the rest of the data set consisting of five 600 second hydrogen alpha images of the Eta Carina Nebula. We can leave this setting on automatic with a value of 500 stars. Click on the Analyze Stars button. Note that the file window list has been populated with the word star, showing that the star analysis has been carried out. As always, APP has chosen one of the sub-exposures to be the reference star, colouring the entry dark grey and adding a ref label. Next, it's into the register menu. We examined some of the options here in the last video when creating a two-pane mosaic. When working with non-mosaic images, we can leave most of these settings on their default and only change them if the registration fails. When creating the mosaic, there were several adjustments that were required, for example, changing the scale start and stop values, turning off the same camera and optics option and changing the registration mode to mosaic. But we shouldn't have to adjust these when working on single pane images. Click on the Start Registration button to continue. Once completed, we can revisit the top drop list and see what's been applied to the sub-exposures so far. Calibrated shows the results of our earlier calibration procedures, including the partial removal of the hot column defect. Next, we can see the effects of the registration and note that the image's orientation has changed. Remember that all other sub-exposures will be rotated if necessary to match the orientation of the reference frame which had obviously been taken after the imaging system had carried out a meridian flip. Proceeding, we can enter the Normalize menu. Normalization is a correction to any of the sensor illumination differences. These will be most noticeable when combining image data sets that were taken on different nights. Short data sets taken on the same night should have fairly similar and even illumination, but obviously data sets taken weeks or months apart will certainly have differences. Normalization can help to smooth these differences out. As usual, we can leave most, if not all, of the options on their defaults, and that's what I'll do here. Click on the Normalize Lights button to start the process. As before, we can view the results of the normalization procedure in the top drop list. Unsurprisingly, there is very little change as the images were taken very close together in time. This is only a small data set made up of five 600 second exposures, but we can view some of the properties of the images by right clicking on the files in the file list window and from the list that opens, click Create Analytical Graph. A list of options will appear and from that we can select one or many of the options to view. Let's start off by clicking on the Quality button. Note that the number 3 image, which was deemed by APP to be used as a reference frame, has been given the highest rating and all other parameters measured in this graph will be compared to that. Repeating the procedure, we can choose some other options, such as the signal-to-noise ratio and the star shape, the latter being something that all practicing astroimages worry about. On this graph, we can see that the signal-to-noise ratio improved fractionally after the meridian flip, but that the quality of the star shape diminished slightly. Our final procedure is to stack the images together using the Integrate menu. As this is just the Hydrogen Alpha data, we'll use the Integrate Per Channel option, and because we are stacking just five sub-exposures, select Median. From Filter, select Windsorized Rejection and turn on Local Normalization Correction. Because this data set was taken close together in time, we won't see much improvement using local normalization correction, but we can certainly turn on multi-band blending. 
Finally, we can tick the Create Outlier Rejection Map to see what has been removed by Astro Pixel Processor from the end stack. And this would normally be aircraft or satellite trails, hot pixels, etc. Set the save directory if necessary. Click on the integrate button and name the file and then sit back while the stack is created. When completed, parts of the hot column defects remain, but in most cases, APP can cleanly remove both hot and cold column defects effectively, so I'm not sure why this data set was so problematical. I'll click on the outlier rejection map image to open it and then scale it heavily so that we can see the outliers, including the hot column artifact and hot pixels. Back on the main image, you can see that the edges are a little bit brighter than the center. We can correct this by clicking on the Tools button and opening the correct vignetting menu. Click Yes and then draw the suggested eight selection boxes or more from around the edge of the frame and press the Calculate button. If happy with the results, click on the Save button to save the corrected image. We can do a before and after correction comparison and as you can see, APP has done a great job of correcting the image. This concludes our tour of Astro Pixel Processor's amazing capabilities. It's a fantastic program for working with astronomical images and is eminently suitable for both beginner and much more advanced astro images.